All right, no jam. How's it going? What's good, Cam Cavone? Thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. Everything is good, man. You know, uh, was reading about your story, the bio you sent me. It sounds, uh, you know, pretty interesting. It sounds like you got a really, you know, wild past and, uh, you know, good dope story. You know, so um, you know, I'm looking forward to getting into it. You know, so where were you uh, born and raised at? I was born in Enid, Oklahoma, and I was raised on the east side. Uh, third block is my hood. That's what I rap, and that's what I'm putting on the map. Okay, and take me through your, you know, your childhood. What was it like for you growing up there? It was rough growing up, uh, just like any other black boy in America in the hood. Typical hood shit going on every day. Um, I grew up in a blood neighborhood. Uh, a lot of the homies from the block grew up to be bloods and, um, you know, successful rappers like me. So there's a lot of talent out in Enid, but um, I grew up around gang members, bloods and crips. Uh, my mom had them over at her house all the time. They were selling drugs and having shootouts and, um, yeah, it was crazy. I saw I saw a lot of crazy shit like that growing up. Um, this one time, these two gang members got in uh, got into it, and they were shooting at each other. They got into a shootout at a at a corner store, and this uh, this local rapper, he was with his girlfriend. Uh, he was a known lo he was a well known local rapper too. Everybody knew him. He was doing his thing. He got caught in a crossfire from shooting his girlfriend, and one of the gang members ran back to my mom's house and hid the gun under the couch. And later on that night, I came home and I found it under the couch and uh, I took it and I started playing with it. And um, I actually took the gun and that became my first gun. And I uh, I hid it in my room and then a couple of days later, it wasn't there when I came back to it. So when I came back for it, so I guess somebody found it or whatever. But the gun did have a body on it when when I had my first gun. And and this was at how old? What age? Yeah, I was six years old at this time. What were you thinking at six years old? You know, you found a gun. I, I, did you know that the gun was dirty at the time? Did you did you know what was going on? I didn't know the gun. Uh, I didn't know the gun had a body on it, but I thought I thought it was cool that I found my first gun. So I just I started playing with it and made it mine, and I felt gangster when I had it. Did you know it was a real gun, or did you think it was a play gun? I knew it was a real gun because there was gang members around all the time, and they were always putting money in my pocket and and you know looking out for me. So I always had a wad of money and a shoebox full of cash. Even at that that age, that young. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned that you seen shootouts. How old were you when you seen your first shootout? Uh, six years old. Can you take me through what happened? Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of shit kind of happened at once because uh, my mom's house was the shop for all these gang members and all these, you know, drug dealers coming and doing their thing. They was coming from Oklahoma City and everything. But, yeah, my first shootout, <clears throat> um, two gang members shooting at each other over whatever reason, and they ran off. But I just remember uh, I was playing with one of my friends. We was in we was in front of my house, and all of a sudden we just heard gunshots. And we look up, and he was right there across the street. One of them was right there across the street, and he was shooting at the other, and he was shooting back at him. But then took off running. One the other one took off running. So it's just normal shit. It was just normal shit. We went back to playing and doing our thing. Did what'd your mom say when did she talk to you or anything when when stuff like that would happen? She just tell me to be careful and just, yeah, just be careful and be strong about it. That's all I could do. That was it, huh? No, like, you know, everything's going to be okay. Like, you weren't really shook about it at that age? No. Nah. Yeah, it became normal. After, really, it was normal from the beginning, so I didn't think, I didn't think no different. Didn't know no better. And I, uh, and you know, I had a love for hip hop at a young age too. So, and my favorite movies was Juice, and you know, a lot of those hood movies. So, really, my my life is just another hood movie. 
And you had mentioned that the feds came and questioned you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Since there, since there was, there was a big drug ring in Enid back back in the day during that time, and and there was a lot going on. And my mom's house just happened to be the, you know, the headquarters of everything, the base of operations, whatever. Everybody was setting up shop there, so the feds were wanting to kick down the door and. And my mom warned me ahead of time, hey, they may come to school and, and question you. And, you know, I'm in kindergarten at this time, first grade at this time. So she's warning me, hey, they're going to come question you and and uh, just be ready. Don't tell them what's going on. Don't tell them what you see or nothing. And I love my mom so much. I never wanted to see her get locked up. So, you know, I was ready for them. And they came and questioned me and they pulled me to the side. My principal came and pulled me to this uh this room or whatever and next thing I know you know a few cops were in there asking me questions and just kept my mouth shut learned to keep my mouth shut since since a young and that's so young to, to be questioned by the feds you said how old uh six years old yeah. kindergarten first grade yeah a lot of this shit was going on when I was like six seven eight years old you know a few, few years three year time span and did you tell your mom what happened yeah, I told her immediately, and she was pissed. Yeah, I can imagine. Okay, so you keep your mouth shut, and did your house get raided or anything after that? Our house never got raided, but uh, it was close to getting raided, but it never got raided. But uh, I would, I go out on missions with my mom all the time because, you know, she didn't have nobody else to watch me or whatever. So this one time, there was a lot of close calls. Like this one time, uh, this house got raided that we were at, but we was in the car and the police are going up there and busting everybody. And and uh, we was right there in the car hiding and they never saw us. One passed right by us with his flashlight. So that's just, that's just an example of the many close calls we had. But yeah, my mom managed to slick through every time. Okay. And, you know, growing up this young, seeing all these, you know, different things, these shootouts, you know, the cops are what looks like coming for you guys. You know, the feds are even questioning you. What do you what are you going through at the time? I mean, compared to maybe your friends, you know, who were your friends? living a similar lifestyle to you or was was you know were their parents involved in the streets also yeah a lot of the homies they were going you know they they were raised the same way going through the same shit too and and i think that's what made a lot of talent come out of enid uh at that time how i was getting my how i was getting through it is writing music and and trying to become a rapper at you know at a young age and I was inspired by Tupac and Eminem and Biggie and Snoop Dogg and and all them guys that were hot at that time so I wanted to be just like them and so I write my own lyrics and and just how old were you when you started rapping I started rapping I was probably in first second grade uh this one time uh, in school, I begged one of my teachers to let me uh, rap in front of the class, and she let me. So, yeah, that was I count that as my first performance. So I've been doing this shit since since I was young, and here I am now. And that's what's up. Did you enter any talent shows or anything? I didn't, I didn't ever go to any talent shows, but um, yeah, I did take a I did take a little break from rapping and in between then but i just started picking it back up here uh, a few years ago so started taking it seriously again a few years ago so okay uh, you had mentioned that some of your favorite rappers were uh eminem and snoop i think you i think i read in your bio that you dyed your hair blonde yeah yeah uh i begged my mom to dye my hair blonde when uh uh when I was a kid, cause, uh, I looked up to Eminem so much, and I was relating to what he was going, you know, what he was going through at that time. So, uh, so yeah, I had my mom dye my hair, and that that was the first time I did that. But uh, recently, I dropped the uh, when MGK dropped that Rap Devil. Uh, I I 
I did a remix to it and called it Rap Demon and uh I dissed him on it to honor Eminem, so hopefully Eminem can notice me from that. But I got a lot of views from it and got a lot of attention from it, so I think it was a good move in my career. Okay. Now as you're growing up, I think I seen in your uh in your bio that your mom also was on drugs at one point or started to do drugs at one point. Yeah, yeah, my mom did follow the drugs at one point uh in her life. You know, Mom was mom mom's always been a gangster and mom's always had mom's always had her ties in the streets and and you know, my mom's the reason why I can go to certain places and certain hoods and and have respect and you know, not have to worry about anything, but um back in the day, my mom, she was uh she had a she had a white boyfriend and uh he was a big drug dealer and he buy her all kinds of nice cars and shit and just have, you know, just have her living that lifestyle. And then after that, she did follow the drugs and, um, yeah. And then what was that like for you when your mom was going through that? It was, it was rough. It made, it made it rough on me, but I think it made me into a, I, I think it, I think it gave me the opportunity to become the, the rapper I am today. So it gave me the, the push to strive for greatness, but yeah, it was rough and and it brought a lot of it brought a lot of bad shit, it brought a lot of negative energy. But it's like I said, there it brought gang members that had shootouts and close calls and everything. So, but we was even homeless at one time. Uh, yeah, we got we got evicted and we were staying in motels and uh living in cars and we even had to stay with one of our boyfriends. Um he actually taught me how to box. He was one of the first people to teach me how to box. He wasn't nothing he wasn't anything special or anything, but uh I learned how to I learned how to throw hands from him for the first time. But uh but yeah, um we had to stay with him for a little bit and just, you know, moving the cars and moving the motels and everything, just, just homeless. And, uh, my grandma, my grandma, who was the next town over, she actually heard how we was living and, and everything that was going on. So she, uh, she, uh, sent one of my uncles to come and come and get us and, and get me out of that lifestyle. So that's what saved me from a, from a lot of bullshit and, kind of mellowed me out a little bit you and your mom go live with your grandma or just you do me and my mom both went and live with my grandma but my mom would go back to Enid occasionally so pretty much it was just me and my grandma's how old how old were you when this happened uh, I was about I was about nine or ten at this time okay so about nine or ten you go live with your grandma and were you going to school during all this yeah I was going to school but shit I didn't really have nothing going at that time, so I was just I found me a found me a different crew and just running around the town thugging. So at this point you're not living in the main city where you grew up at, right? Right. You're living with right. your grandma. Right. And so at some point you still end up back in your hood. Yeah, because we we would go we would go back and visit Enid and you know, I'll go visit the homies from the block and hang out with them and run around with them and do our shit still, but but I was just the next town over, so we always we always had our ties in Eden and we always will. Okay, so you're living at your grandma's, you're going back and forth. At what point do you actually start getting involved in the streets yourself? I was actually involved in the streets at this time. Uh, like I said, I had my crew, we was thugging, doing our thing. Uh, this was back in Eden and, and, and uh, and Perry at this at the new town I was at, just doing our thing, breaking in houses, breaking in cars, and and shit, just hoodlum shit. At ten years old. Yep. Wow. Okay, and I think you mentioned uh, you grew up in a blood neighborhood. Yeah, in Enid. In Enid, and uh, okay, that's where your mom was from too. Your mom grew up there also. Uh, actually, my mom's not from there. The town that we moved to is where my mom's from. 
but my mom was in Enid. Uh, my mom was in Enid when she had me, and she raised me there. So, okay. Did you actually, you know, become a gang member yourself? I didn't actually become a gang member myself, but I'm affiliated by the homies and um, my older cousin Santino, who uh, got me in, the, who helped me get my rap shit going. Um, he's actually he's a he's a blood. He's a he's an OG too. So. I'm just, I'm affiliated. I got family and, and yeah. Okay. Now, as you're growing up, at any point, do you get arrested for anything? Yeah. Um, <laughs> me and the homies got, uh, we got, it. we was real young. Me and the homies got arrested for stealing. So, on some boys in the hood shit, we got, we got in trouble for stealing and, and uh, shit. I didn't get in too much trouble when I was young because I was just I was just too sneaky and I never got caught. Okay, now what's your mom going through at this time? Um, while, while you're living at your grandma's and your mom's kind of you know, out and about, you know, is she? Does she, you know, kick back a little bit, or does she still, she's still going hard in the streets? Um, she was trying to, she was trying to kick back, but I'm gonna be honest, mom was still going hard in the streets. Mom's just a, mom's just a street person at heart, so, so mom's always gonna, mom's always gonna be in them streets, but, <laughs> but yeah, she was, she was still going hard and and doing her thing, and shit, I was just kind of. I was just in a whole different environment and trying to trying to get used to that. My grandma was trying to get me on the right path and shit. Yeah, I think my uh I think my grandma was just an angel in my life and you know, trying to save me from everything and and I think she did. I think I I think I dodged a lot of a lot of bullshit because of my grandma, but It sounds like your grandma really helped you out a lot. Yeah, she did. Yeah. But then after high school I kinda got back into the streets again and and getting into shit and picking up the the rap and shit again and for people that don't know whereabouts in Oklahoma is Eden at are you close to Oklahoma City yeah Enid's about about an hour away from Oklahoma City okay and probably about two hours away from Tulsa so it's like a small city or it's a small city and I feel like I feel like OKC, Tulsa and Enid are the big three when it comes to like gang activity and even even hip hop. I feel like they're the big three out of Oklahoma. So Eden is known for being a, a gang city. Yeah. You mentioned that you grew up in like around a lot of bloods and you looked up to Snoop Dogg. Did that ever, did you ever like, you know, Snoop is this hard dude, you know, cripping or anything? And, you know, did anybody ever even care? Uh, no, nobody ever really cared. Nobody ever, nobody ever said anything like that. But, uh, they were more, they were more strict about, uh, They were just all. They were just all strict. They were. They were more strict about their their gang colors and everything back then. And it was kind of. It's way different than it is now. So, so back then nobody could just come around with a different color on or you know than the than the opposite of the gang or anything like that. It just. It. It would. It would. Back then, it more shit would have went down than than today. But as for for Snoop or me listening to Snoop or anything like that, no, it was never a problem. How do you think it affected you growing up with, you know, nothing but gang members? I don't want to say nothing but, but a lot of gang members around you. Well, I think it, I think it hardened me. I think it made me tough. I'm not no pushover. Um, like I said, I was never officially jumped into a gang, but, you know, I be thugging. And I don't take shit from nobody and, and. I'm not afraid to pop if I have to. Growing up with it all around you, you know, with your mom and, and the family and everything, 
was your mom trying to keep you away from the streets or trying to like get you away from that lifestyle or what what did your mom think my mom was trying to keep me away from it but i was trying to get into it and how did she feel when she found out you know you were in the streets you know thugging she was mad she was threatening the uh threatening to send me to juvie and and all that kind of shit and get me locked up and yeah she was she was threatening all that shit but she never went through with it but your mom had to have known a lot of people you were hanging out with did she try to stop you from hanging around with these other kids she didn't really try to stop me from hanging out with them she more uh, just tried to talk to me and you know tell me learn learn from what i'm seeing around me and i guess eventually i would listen or Plus, around that time, my grandma came in, so came in the picture. So, I guess both of them started influencing me there at the end. Okay. What do you think was one of the most craziest things you've seen growing up? I think the um, the most craziest thing I've seen growing up was probably, like I said, all the shootouts and. Um, just all the, all the drug dealers and, and just fiends around and, you know, uh, third block, third block was like a, like a mini Harlem back in the day, you know, this long stretch, you just, there was just a line of people just lined up for drugs and selling drugs and, and, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy. Now, growing up in this lifestyle, you're going to go through a lot, a lot of ups, a lot of downs, a lot of things you're going to see, you know, drug deals can go bad. Um, you know, people die over drug deals, over a lot of money. Is there any of those type of situations that you that you've seen growing up? Yeah, I've seen a lot of them. Uh, one that comes to mind. Um... My mom and this uh this drug dealer that she knew from Stillwater actually, um, a drug deal went bad between them at these uh at these apartments on the uh northwest side of town, and he was mad at her for showing up or whatever. But she owed him some money, but he was mad at her for showing up or whatever reason I don't know. But he came he came, he came right out the door and grabbed her by her neck and threw her on the ground. And I was in the car and I saw the whole thing. So I jumped out the car and I was like, hey, motherfucker. And he looked at me and I pulled out this little 22 uh, high point I had at the time. And I shot at him. He took off running through the breezeway. I missed, but that was my first time shooting at somebody. Uh, what did your mom think when that happened? Did she know you had a gun on you? Yeah, my mom knew I had a gun, but... My mom told me having a gun is having a short life. So when I first when I first got that gun, she told me that, and I, you know I told her I told her it's you know it's crazy it's crazy around the city and it's crazy with me coming up in this rap shit. So I'm gonna need it and I'm gonna need it to protect me and I'm gonna need it to protect you. And sure enough, I needed to protect my mom that night. So I don't think she was too mad about it, but like I said, mom mom would have probably want me to handle it differently but i'm always step from my mama i hear that i hear that man you know carrying a gun man it comes with a lot did the cops ever catch you with a gun or anything like that uh i'll put it like this me and the homies me and my homies we we've, we've had some gunplay with some with some ops and some enemies and and some haters and Fuck niggas, you know, just like this one time, uh, this girlfriend I had at the time, she had this other girl she was kicking it with and, uh, she needed some help getting some shit from her boyfriend's house or whatever. So me and my homie decided we'd help him or whatever. And the other girl's boyfriend, he got all mad and, and got his homies come, you know, coming after us. So we was... We got into a big fight out at their house. They was actually having a party out there and we got in a big fight out there. And then 
they followed us back to me and my homie's house and me and my homie pulled our guns out on them and shit and they actually had guns too but yeah it didn't, ex it didn't escalate after that because the fucking the girls were screaming and yelling and shit talking about we're gonna call the cops so and then go beyond that but um other than that my homie he got shot and killed at a party my other homie he got shot and killed at a party over over a female so that was bad that was bad to hear that when that happened me were you there when that you were there when that happened i wasn't there but uh me and him was supposed to uh kick it the next day and when I woke up, I got the news. It was all over, it was all over Facebook and and everything that he got he got killed. So it was it was crazy. Yeah, yeah, man, that's uh, that's rough. Uh, you know, growing up in this lifestyle, man, you're gonna have to interact with the police a lot. Not obviously not by choice, but you're gonna be harassed by the police. They're gonna pull you over. They're gonna search your car. You know, you already mentioned how, you know, the feds came in, uh, questioned you when you were only six. You know, did you have any bad situations with the police or being harassed by the police or anything? Um, yeah, I've, I've dealt with that a lot growing up and shit. I deal with that now. I think, uh, I think a lot of upcoming rappers deal with that shit, but I do got an open case that I can't speak about too much. But yeah, just same old shit, just. There ain't nothing in my city but catching cases or ending up in a casket. So that's why I'm trying to get the fuck up on out of here. Because like Boozy said, you know, niggas be hypnotized with hatred and niggas be hating on you. And and, and just you end up be dying in your own city. So that's why. That's why. Shit, Boozy's a mentor to me now. And so is T-Rail. So I'm, I take their words and their advice to the heart. So it's time to get out of here as soon as I can. As soon as I get done fighting this case and getting done uh, beating that case and um, wrapping up everything else with this with this rap shit, time to get out. Okay, yeah, that's what's up. Did you said there was a a part you wanted to talk about where you beat up a cop? Yeah, I did beat up an off-duty state trooper. Uh, it was about a year and a half ago. Um, I was going, I was in the Walmart parking lot and I was speeding through the parking lot. I was, I was mad as hell about something. And this couple got out of their car and, uh, the, the, the chick or whatever, she was like, slow down, you know, cussing at me and shit. And I was like, fuck you, bitch. You know, I cussed at her back and her husband sitting there looking at me all crazy and shit. So I park, I get out the car and, you know, they're talking shit to me and while they're walking in the store and I'm following them, I'm like, shit, let's get it, you know, let's fight or whatever. And, you know, he's a he's a big ass, he's a big ass dude. So he's looking at me like, dude, you don't want none, you don't want none. So I follow them on into Walmart and I'm like, actually, I do. So he, uh, uh, we're sitting there like, you know, stepping up to each other and shit and he pushes me down on the ground and then, uh. I get up and uh, I speared him into the into a fruit stand, and I start punching him. And then his wife at that time was like, "He's an off-duty state trooper." So uh, I, I continue punching him and shit. And then I threw him into another fruit stand and I start punching him again. And then like four or five Walmart employees pulled me off of him, and and then he tackled me to the ground when all the Walmart employees grabbed me because I was beating his ass already. So he gonna wait till they all grab me. And he took me down to the ground and pulled his badge out and showed it to everybody. He's like, I'm off duty, state trooper, and blah, blah. So um, I was like, well, shit, y'all was talking shit to me first, and you do the first punch, and it's, on, and it's on, the, on the camera. So, you know, we can go. You take me to jail if you want to. I was like, shit, I'm ready to go to jail over this if, uh, if you caught on camera talking shit and putting your hands on me first. And he sat there and thought about it for a second. He was like, if I let you go, then don't fight no more and get out of here. I was like, cool. So I got up and walked on out. So on some Tupac shit, I beat up an off-duty state trooper and got away with it. <laughs> That's what's up. For sure. So that was it. That he never, so they never called the cops or no charges were pressed, nothing? Nope. Okay. That's what's up.
And now that you eventually graduate from high school, did you ever have a regular job? Yeah, I worked regular jobs. Uh, I worked at a Dairy Queen. I think that was my first job. Well, I mowed, I mowed with one of my coaches. Uh, me and him was real real tight through high school, and uh, uh, he guided me and shit. He, he, was, he was a good mentor to me, but um, yeah, I mowed yards with him, so I guess that was my first job, and then I worked at Dairy Queen after, and yeah, just moving boxes and, and just being in warehouse kind of thing after that. At what point do you start taking music serious? I started taking music serious about uh, about 2016. I think I, uh, I met my girlfriend about that time, and I started taking music seriously about that time, too. I just I was going through a lot of shit, so I felt like I, sh I should pick up the mic again and, and start making money from this shit. And I've been, I've been grinding for the past five years. Have you worked with any big artists? Yeah. Um, I've worked with T Rail and uh, I worked with Boozy. Um, October twenty twenty, um, T Rail came to OK. He came to OKC and um, I got in the studio with him to um, make a song together. And uh, we made a video and um, took a picture and everything to you know pretty much show the world you know next big artist and you know uh in cahoots with t-rail and and making music together so it gave me a lot of gave me a lot of boost and a lot of clout and attention so that happened and then um as i was waiting a couple months later for t-rail to uh send his half of the song uh we went ahead and decided to put boozy on it because him and uh boozy were having their their b-day bash well t-rail's b-day bash and boozy was going to be there so um me and t-rail was talking on the phone he was like man let's put boozy on on the song and i was you know i told him that was a good idea so i showed up to the b-day bash and i was you know i was vip all night and t-rail's crew running around with them we was club hopping and partying and then we went to the studio later on that night and uh Boozy was there, and T. Rail and Boozy made their "Long Live Three remix <clears throat> in honor of Mo Three, and uh, it was uh, it was an honor to sit there and watch them cook up that classic. And then after that, me and Boozy took our picture, and uh, Boozy sent his half of the the song, and uh, T. Rail sent his half of the song, and all I, all I can do is do my I'm doing my half, and all I can do is uh do what I can to make this a hit. So, yeah, I've got a big song coming with T-Rail and Boozy, Get Used to Me, and I'm going to have an album coming out, coming out after that. Man, that's what's up. Sounds like you got, you got some good stuff cooking up. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so what do you got planned for the future, music-wise? Well, I'm going to do it independently as much as I can, but if that if that deal that's worth it you know comes through then i think i'll sign i'll sign to someone um <clears throat> but for now all i can do is just uh keep pushing this music shit and getting songs out i'm gonna be dropping a lot of new music soon for my fans i have about i have about eight thousand nine thousand followers on instagram right now so i got a lot of fans and you know they're waiting on some new music so I'm just uh I've been waiting to get this big song with T Rail and Boozy out first and then I can follow up my album and <clears throat> a bunch of other singles and everything. So it'll be worth it and it's all coming soon. But um other than that, shoot a movie and get up out of Oklahoma. Okay. Well man, it sounds like you've had, you know, quite a journey through your life. Yeah, I have. Right now, uh, right now I'm in Stillwater, and uh, I uh, clicked up with some of the Stillwater dudes that I grew up with. Cause when I was in Perry at the time, I was actually, I was actually clicking up with some of the Stillwater dudes. Cause Stillwater's a town over, and uh, you know, Stillwater they they're a, they're a small, 
they're a small town, small city gangs, you know, gangsta town too, gangsta city too. So you know, they got they got thugs there too, and and they get down. So I got some homies from Stillwater. Uh, shout out Katie Curry, and shout out my barber, uh, Jew Blends. He's the one that got me this fresh boozy fade right now. But uh, he he's uh down at the Headliners Barbershop. I'd like to put them on the map too. They they show me nothing but love, the the Stilly, the Stilly gang. Shit. I just uh I just called us the Stilly Sopranos cause Stilly move at the Stilly the Stilly the Stilly guys, they move like a mob. You know, everybody looks out for each other and, and everybody's related to each other in some kind of way. So yeah, these 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 Stilly dudes don't play either, but I clicked up with them and um I got real strong in Stillwater, along with my own rep from Enid. So, uh, my homie Katie Curry, he he's been my, by my side and and been my muscle and helping me get helping me conquer the rap game. So, all right, man, that's what's up. Stilly on you the map got too. Got a lot going on, man. That's what's up, man. Well, I appreciate you. Hey, I appreciate you for having me, Cam Capone. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. You know, dope story. I'm sure I'm sure people are gonna like it. And um, you know, good luck with you, man. Hey, good luck to you too. Yeah, thank you for yep. sure. All right, bro.